Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and it's time for Chunky Red, a deck trying to ramp into all sorts of big scary things thanks to Iron Crank Feet, a 4 mana sorcery that adds 7 red mana to our mana pool but we can only cast one more spell this turn. So on turn 5 we can potentially play Feet, add 7 mana and then we'll have the 8 mana required to cast Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which is the biggest and baddest planeswalker in standard right now and can easily take over a game. And and we can even potentially cast Ugin on turn 4 in this deck if we have a turn 3 Heraldic Banner into a turn 4 Feet into Ugin, so that's potentially quite exciting. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got 2 copies of Spikefield Hazard, which can deal 1 damage to any target, but we also have the flexibility of playing it as a tap land. At 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Fire Prophecy, dealing 3 damage to a creature, and we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do we also get to draw a card, so we can potentially get rid of excess copies of Iron Crank Feet or Ugin, and then potentially find something else. We also have 2 copies of Shredded Sails, a card I've also used in the Ragdos midrange deck recently, and has the flexibility of maybe killing a flying creature out of the rogues deck, but can also destroy an artifact like the Great Henge or Embercleave out of the Gruul Adventure decks, and then if we don't need any of those modes we can always cycle it away and draw a card for 2 mana, and cycling doesn't count as casting a spell, so if we have 2 spare mana from an Iron Crank feat, we can potentially sink it into cycling a Shredded Sails, which is quite nice. Then we also have the full place of the Bone Crusher Giant, and often we'll use the Stomp Adventure first for 2 mana, dealing 2 damage to any target, and then afterwards we can play a 4-3 creature, so nice 2 for 1. And then Shatter Skull Smashing, also a land that we can play as a nice removal spell in the late game. So in reality this deck has quite a few lands if you count all the dual faced cards. Also two copies of Valakut Awakening, which is a 3 mana instant, letting us put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then draw that many cards plus one. So it's very similar to Fire Prophecy in helping us get rid of additional copies of Iron Crank Feet, Ugin, or some of the more situational cards, and make sure we find more action, but we also get to play it as a tap land sometimes. Then two copies of Heraldic Banner. We don't have a ton of creatures to benefit from the plus one plus so bonus, but having the ramp is quite nice since there's plenty of five drops we wouldn't mind casting on turn four, and it also helps us set up a turn for Ugin thanks to Iron Crank Feet. And then we've got two copies of Storm's Wrath as a sweeper dealing four damage to each creature and each planeswalker, and two copies of Leyline Tyrant, which is also quite synergistic with Iron Crank Feet, because if we cast Feet, we'll have seven mana, we can potentially play a Tyrant, and then a third Tyrant will kind of save that three additional mana from the Iron Crank Feet to potentially use on the following turn, and then we can keep saving up all our spare red mana until at some point Leyline Tyrant dies, and then we can pay any amount of red mana, and when we do, it deals that much damage to any target, so can potentially just go upstairs and win the game. Then at 5 mana we've got 2 copies of Bresh Taunter, a 1-1 indestructible goblin, and whenever Taunter is dealt damage it deals that much damage to target opponent, so also synergizes nicely with a card like Storm's Wrath, where we can deal 4 damage to each creature and then redirect that damage to the opponent, and for 2 in a red we can tap a Bresh Taunter to fight another target creature, so if the opponent has some large creatures in play, thinking a Lovestruck Beast being a 5-5, then we get to deal 5 damage to our own Taunter, which is then redirected to the opponent. So that's a nice win condition against the green decks. And then we also have two copies of Chandra Heart of Fire, a 5 loyalty planeswalker that can plus 1 to deal 2 damage to any target, but can also plus 1, then we discard our hand and exile the top 3 cards of our library, and then we can play those cards until end of turn, so it can potentially provide a nice bit of card advantage as well. And then two copies of Ox of Agonas, which is great against the various mill decks, as we'll potentially get to escape it out of the graveyard for just double red by exiling eight other cards from our graveyard. And then when the Ox enters the battlefield, we discard our hand and draw three cards. And if we escaped it, it also gets an additional plus one plus one counter. And then of course, topping off our curve, four copies of Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which can function as a board wipe with the minus X ability, and the plus two deals three damage to any target. And Ugin and Chandra both synergize quite nicely with Fiery Emancipation, our last card here, a six mana Mythic Rare Enchantment, saying if a source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. So now all of a sudden Ugin deals nine damage when using the plus ability, and Chandra deals six, and another nice interaction is with Brash Taunter, 
let's say we have both Brash Taunter, Chandra and Fire Emancipation in play at the same time, we can use Chandra to deal 6 damage to our Brash Taunter, and then the Brash Taunter is also going to triple the damage dealt to the opponent, so now all of a sudden 2 damage is translated through the Brash Taunter and Fire Emancipation into 18 damage, so that's quite the upgrade. And then going over the mana base, besides all the dual face cards here, we also have 4 copies of Crawling Barons as a creature land that can also help us close out the game and maybe make use of the extra mana from Iron Crack Feet every now and then. And then 60 Mountains and 2 Castle Emberth to potentially pump the team, but once again we don't have that many creatures, so it's not a super useful land to have, and just want to make sure we have plenty of Mountains so castles don't come into play tapped too often. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with not the most exciting hand, but I think I'm still going to keep. We've got some early interaction, and then Fire Prophecy can maybe get rid of one of our cards, depending on how the draw shapes up. Turn 1 Gilded Goose. Alright, second feat means we can easily get rid of one of them with the Fire Prophecy. Gonna wait to see what my opponent plays on turn 2. Might kill the goose, we'll see. Alright, Gem Racer mutated onto the Gilded Goose. Uh, yeah, I guess that works out quite nicely for me. As now Shredded Sails can kill Gem Racer. We'll play Hazard Tapped since we're not drawing too many lands here. Prophecy can maybe get rid of a feat. But our opponent does nothing. I'm not gonna cast an Ox here and discard my entire hand, that seems pretty bad. Another Gem Racer. Sure. Chandra could be nice. Hmm, how do I want to do this? I guess I just Storm's Wrath and take the one for one. I could try and be greedy and wait. But I don't want to get Chandra in play and have my opponent play like a Questing Beast and Killer. Gilded Goose I can work with. Alright, Chandra kill Goose seems totally fine here. Inscription of Abundance is going to put 2 plus 1 counters on the Goose to save it, fair enough. Well, if my opponent has a Questing Beast now, that's pretty bad for me. Or just another Gem Razor, I guess, would do it too. It's going to be a Lovestruck Beast Adventured, and presumably cast here. So this is definitely a matchup where we want to find our Brash Taunter, if possible. And of course, Ugin the Spirit Dragon would be nice too. So one thing we could do if we're feeling desperate is cast Iron Crank Feet and then use Chandra to discard her hand, exile the top three in the hopes of finding an Ugin. But I don't know if that's really necessary. I could just fire prophecy the beast and deal two damage with Chandra. And see what we can find with prophecy. Another Iron Crank Feet, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, could also go Feet into an Ox here, which isn't amazing, but could be okay. The problem is I wouldn't be able to cast an Ugin if I draw it, so I think I'm fine just uh, passing here and then maybe next turn I'll make the play I described. Alright, opponent has another Inscription of Abundance. Well, now things aren't looking so great anymore. I can feed to cast an Ox here, so I can jump in front of Lovestroke Beast and hope to draw something relevant. Otherwise my Chandra is gonna be dead. Yeah, that seems fine now. Let's 
sadly couldn't cast the Stomp to finish off the Lovestruck Beast, because Feet only lets us cast one spell afterwards. But finding another Ox means we get to draw more cards. And my opponent is down to one card in hand, so presumably if we find Ugin and get to cast it, we should be in a good spot. Although Ram through takes out Ox and now kills Chandra. So there goes one of our card draw engines. Yeah, opponent with lots of pump spells and interaction here. Another Bone Crusher. So I've got seven mana total. Is it worth it to lose one Bone Crusher Giant? I think I'm just gonna double stomp the 1 1 so the beast can't attack. And play one of the Giants. And then next turn we'll play Ox once we're hopefully empty handed. Stone Coil for one. They could have played a bigger one, but they wanted the beast to attack. Alright, I guess I'll take nine. Ooh, there's Ugin. Kind of comes at an awkward time where we kind of wanted to cast Ox, and now we can't. But we just need one more land, so I definitely just play Giants and pass, and then if we draw lands, great. In the meantime, we can try and double block Lovestruck Beast. And we'll see what the opponent wants to do. Decides to stay back. Nope, goes for the trade. At that point, they might as well send in Serpents. All right. Land of the top, preferably an untapped one. And that'll do it. And then we'll just minus one. Now my opponent could still kill me if they top deck a gem racer, as they'll be able to mutate onto serpent and hit me for five. So we gotta dodge that draw as well as maybe a questing beast. And I guess Primal Might could have killed us too, so my opponent potentially had quite a few outs to still win. But now that we get to untap with Ugin, things are looking much better. So yeah, opponent just decides to pack it in. We could deal three to the Stone Coil to get rid of it, and then play our land, play Ox, get to draw three more cards. Also had an Ox in the graveyard, we were, I think, pretty close to escaping. So things were looking quite good for us. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hands in the sense that we've got some early interaction and yeah, we're just looking for an iron crank feat to ramp us into Ugin. Smashing we'll hang on to for now. Mar Tritons are point on the black reds mid-range deck. Yeah, it's probably fine to prophecy here. And then what to get rid of is a question. I do think Emancipation is pretty good in this matchup since the red blank doesn't have any ways of removing enchantments. So maybe I get rid of one of the barons to find a feat. And there we go. All right, I'll play Smashing Tapped. And then it's kind of interesting, I could Next turn go feet into Tyrants, have three spare mana, but then if they kill my Tyrants, I'll be pretty sad. Or I could wait until I have a land five. Alright, now that we drew another feet, I'm kind of into the idea of feet into Tyrants. And at least if they kill my Tyrant, I get to take out my Triton on the way out. So my opponent can't quite escape. 
Proxayet's gonna play Kicked Thirst, and then sadly we lose our Tyrant, make use of our mana before it goes away, and kill Triton. Alright, still get to play an Ugin, and my opponent did just play one of their answers to my Planeswalker. There's two copies of Thirst in the graveyard already, so presumably they don't have too many left. And if we draw lands and get to play Emancipation, Ugin would start dealing 9 damage, although we're probably going to see an escaped Croxa here. But Ugin can easily take care of Croxa with a minus 2. And then we can start attacking with Crawling Barons. So, minus two. Activate. And get in there. And then do I play my lands? I think I'll hang on to it, even though we could see another Croxa. Of course, smashing has quite a bit of utility, being able to kill a creature. Can maybe combine it with the 3 damage from Ugin, so we can keep plussing and maybe work our way up towards an ultimate at minus 10. Which is always fun. Gotta hope to dodge another Blood Chief's Thirst. Because if they do remove Ugin, we don't have a ton going on anymore. But typically, the Ragdos decks only really have Blood Chief's Thirst as answers to Planeswalkers. Alright, Shadow Skull Smashing, I guess, can also get there eventually. But Ugin's still here. And in the meantime, Crawling Barons is getting in some extra damage. Already has four counters on it, so next time it's gonna hit for six. So if my opponent's entire game plan is going smashing into smashing to kill Ugin, we should be okay. It's gonna be a robber of the rich, doesn't get to exile any cards, hits Ugin down to three. Is a double stomp to finish off Ugin. Nope, just two damage leaving Ugin at one. So we can hit for six, and then we can't quite kill our opponent, but we can just plus on the robber to get rid of it. And my opponent concedes, alright. So an early Ugin doing a lot of damage, especially against a deck that doesn't have a ton of answers to it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck, which is probably not going to be a great matchup for us, since Elspeth conquers death, conquers most of our win conditions. But I'll try and keep it. So appears to be a blue-white variant. Don't think we'll have any use for Hazard dealing one damage. But Fire Prophecy can maybe take out Skyclave Apparition. Alright, blue-green. Got a few options. I can shred sails the goose. That seems okay. Could also destroy the food token. But I'll just take out the goose for now. Save my prophecy for future creature. And for now, it's unclear what I need to get rid of. If I decide to discard with a prophecy. I guess my points on Sultai. And Omen of the Sea, of course, a staple in any blue Yorion deck. So, at least if they're not playing white, we don't need to fear Elspeth Conqueror's death. Not sure if my opponent's playing any counter spells, which can also be tough if we're trying to resolve 8 mana cards. Alright, there is some white in there, so maybe a 4-color Yorion deck 
or they're just playing the Triome as kind of a blue-green land and it's just banned. Well, drawing the second Ox isn't great, so I'll probably bottom one of them as soon as I get the chance to play Prophecy. If my opponent does nothing, I can always put two counters on my Crawling Barons. Opponent passes. They typically don't want to sacrifice their Omen, as they want to keep it around to flicker with Yurion. Well, let's see what land Fabled Passage gets. Planes, so they are definitely pretty heavy into whites, maybe getting double white for an Elspeth Conqueror's death, which is going to show up anyway. Bowden does nothing. No need to turn it into a creature just yet. So, I could play my Brash Taunter. Don't know if that's where I want to be if my opponent is holding a Conqueror's death. Taunter doesn't do much if the opponent doesn't have any creatures in play. Alright, Omen of the Sun making 2-1-1 tokens. Gives me something to fight with Taunter at least. Six mana. Could maybe see a Dream Trawler. Which we can potentially answer with Ugin's minus ability. Alright, there's the Elspeth Conqueror's death, unfortunately. Exile's a taunter. But maybe they won't have it anymore by the time we play Ugin. That's the hope, at least. For now. Don't really want to play Ox when I have a full hand. Prophecy to kill a token seems weak. Good smashing to kill two tokens, but it also seems pretty bad. I guess I'll just get in for four with my Crawling Barons and... Just keep hitting my land drops until I can cast Ugin. Enigmatic Incarnation. Spicy. Let's see if they sacrifice their Saga. They do. And they can get a Dream Trawler. And there it is. 3-5 Flying Lifelink can potentially gain Hexproof. Alright, I'll play a Leyline Tyrant and then... Don't expect it to survive necessarily. My opponent could still have a Skyclave Apparition in hand. So I don't think I want to take 3 from playing the Smashing. I'll just play tapped and then still potentially have the option to cast Prophecy in the opponent's turn. Otherwise we can start floating mana to help us ramp into Ugin in kind of an unconventional way. Alright, that is second Elspeth Conqueror's death, unfortunately. Uh, so this only triggers when it dies and not when it gets exiled. So I'll probably end up Casting the Prophecy on a token just to try and hit my land drops, and then if we can get an Ugin in play, that's going to be pretty strong. So there's still hope. Don't need to fear any counter spells. And there's no Elspeth attacks in place just yet, so Ugin's still only 8 mana. So I'll take 5. And we'll see what the Incarnation gets. If anything. Sacrifices Birth to get a 3-drop, maybe set us on Champion, I was about to say. Draws a card with Constellation. Well, I could kill it with Prophecy. Probably fine to do so. There is an argument for not killing it so that I can exile it with Ugin instead to make future Conqueror's Death worse. But on the off chance that we don't draw land here, probably better to get rid of it. 
Hazard sadly comes into play tapped. And so does the Awakening. So those were two very awkward draws in a row. And next turn I won't be able to play Ugin because of the Conqueror's Death Tax. So yeah, that's uh, less than ideal. So do I cast Awakening? What am I looking for? It's nothing that really gets rid of Dream Trawler, is there? Suppose I just play my land tapped and pass and then can still activate my Crawling Barons to block a token. And I can maybe cast Awakening. Depending on the situation. Another Omen. So we're probably gonna see Yurion cast here. But even though they could flicker the Conqueror's Death, the uh, tax is still gonna apply from the original one. Just gonna flicker some of the omens. Tax with everyone. So I'm taking seven. Or I can block a token. But yeah, I'm kind of just dead to the flyers next turn. Not sure what I can draw to get out of it, since I guess Iron Crank Feet could do it. Because then I can feet for six mana to make seven. So if I have feet plus an untapped lands, I can still cast Ugin. So I'm probably better off casting Awakening than activating my Crawling Barons here. Well, we need a feat of the top. There's only one card in standard that really gets us out of this mess, and it's in our hand. But it costs two more mana. And a Bone Crusher Giant is no feat. Yeah, that's sad. Let's see if we would have drawn Iron Crank feet anytime soon here. Yeah, it was two cards down, so we were incredibly close. Alright, GG's. Champion coming back with a Conqueror's Death. And an attack will do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. So we've got feet into Ugin and plenty of lands to cast everything, so hopefully no counter spells. And then we should be in a pretty good spot. Turn one, Kazandu Valley, so it could be like the Red Green Adventure deck, in which case holding on to Spikefield Hazard could be useful. Maybe take out an Innkeeper before it draws too many cards. Alright, Black Green could still be an Adventure deck. Scavenging Ooze. Yeah, I'll hang on to Hazard, I think. We've got plenty of lands to cast our spells in the meantime. Now, if my opponent is playing the Black Green Adventure deck, they will have Murderous Rider as a clean answer for Ugin. As opposed to maybe the Red Green Adventure deck, which doesn't have that many clean answers. Order of Midnight, just as a 2 2 flyer. 
I'll take two. All right, Banner is actually an amazing draw, as that will allow me to play Ugin next turn. So, hopefully my opponent adds another creature to the board that we can wipe away with the minus ability. Technically could also just play a Chandra and start plussing, but Kazanu Mammoth is pretty much what we were hoping for. So if my opponent doesn't have a Murder Strider in hand, or I suppose Questing Beast would also be pretty strong. Ugin's just gonna take over the game. And we'll take four. Small price to pay. Ooh. Fire Emancipation with an Ugin in play is also a sight to behold. All right, do you have an answer for Ugin? If they questing beast me, I guess it's a little awkward since we didn't play Hazard and I wouldn't be able to smash him for four. So that could be pretty bad. If it's just a Murder Strider, we still have Chandra, so it's not too bad. Well, doesn't seem like they have a questing beast or we would have seen it already. And another Order of Midnights. How about we just play a second Planeswalker? And then next turn, Emancipation means 6 damage with Chandra, 9 damage with Ugin. So that's gonna close out the game in a hurry. Opponent finally plays Innkeeper after I played my Hazard tapped, and I lost Struck Beasts, but I didn't think it's gonna matter too much. So, play Emancipation. Yeah, we'll just go upstairs with Ugin, and Chandra can finish off a Lost Struck Beast. And then next turn we can burn them out. Opponent gets to have their own Planeswalker, it's only fair. Well, this was pretty much an ideal draw. Turn 3 Banner, turn 4 Feet into Ugin, and then Chandra and Emancipation, because why not? Second Emancipation, oh yes. And 27 damage with a single Ugin activation, you love to see it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Awakening can get rid of the second feat and dig me towards an Ugin or some other big finisher. Hazard as early interaction if needed. Now I've got a suspicion my opponent might be on mono red. We'll see if that turns out to be true. Weasel bank rat cap. Fine hazard targets. Hmm, probably still hang on to Awakening. Don't know if I'll get rid of the Ox. Or if I just get rid of one of the Iron Crank feats. It's gonna be a Cargon Intimidator. Would have been a nice hazard target as well. Could also Awakening and just get rid of everything. Gets rid of a land, luckily. I think I hang on to a land and a feet and just ditch ox and feet here. Alright. Not a bad set of draws, and Brash Taunter is also quite good against Mono Red. So I get to go Banner. 
plus Fire Prophecy. There are arguments to Fire Prophecy right away in case my opponent's playing Infuriates, but I'll wait. Could have also gone Feet into Brash Taunter. But maybe we'll draw into an Ugin, and then I'll want to save the feet. Shocks my face. I guess they want to empty their hand for Robber. So I can just get rid of a land since we have five mana already, plus a feat to potentially cast Ugin. We are down to eight, but there's Ugin. So I guess we'll kill the Intimidator if we really have to. The ultimate also gains 7, which is relevant against an aggressive red deck. And our hand's still quite powerful, plenty of answers for creatures. So yeah, I guess burn spells is what we're most afraid of. But it's pretty hard for a standard red deck to kill us at 6 with only 2 lands in play. So we'll just play a Taunter. Gets one extra power thanks to Banner as well. Alright, Phoenix probably has to go after Ugin, otherwise we get to ultimate. Decides to go face. It's not quite gonna work out for them, I'm afraid. Well, it's not every day that we get to see an Ugin ultimate, so that's kind of neat. And it's probably enough. Now my opponent explodes. Alright. Well, that was a fun way to end this run with Chonky Red. Definitely not the most competitive standard deck out there, pretty weak to counter spells but capable of some pretty silly things as we've seen. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.